Hi, my name is Marsha LeBlanc from Coding Blonde, and today we're talking about cybersecurity, and in particular about Team Red versus Team Blue, and also how to get into cybersecurity. How do you become Team Red or Team Blue? And so to find out more about this topic, I've interviewed Brad, who is an awesome person, a cybersecurity expert, and also the director of Cyber Academic Partnerships at Circadence. So let's hear Brad's thoughts on the topic. Hi Brad, how are you? Good afternoon, I'm great. Thanks Mosh, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for finding time and talking to me once again and talking about Team Blue versus Team Red. Love it. One of my favorite topics. Had a blast last time, so thanks for having me back. Thank you. And so let's jump straight into it. Um, what is Team Blue versus Team Red? What does it actually mean? Yeah. It's a great question. Um, so in, in the world of cybersecurity, there are kind of two uh, positions that you can take from uh, what is known as a cyber operator. Um, so a cyber professional um, that's working in um, the lingo is a SOC, uh, Secure Operations Center. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, someone that's working in a SOC might be uh, on Team Red, which means more offensive in nature and skill set, um, or Team Blue, um, which is more defensive uh, in nature and skill set. Um, and there are uh, some differences and quite a bit of similarities, and there's definitely a need for both. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it definitely is an opportunity for folks to kind of find uh, what relates to them and, and become part of the cybersecurity workforce um, in a way that hits home. Hmm, nice. And when you say that they're sitting in a sock, I just think of Harry Potter references to mind. <laughs> I just imagine them in a sock like Dobby. <laughs> I, I can't help it. Um, it might be a little different than that. It's <laughs> equipped with TVs everywhere and some of them are pretty high tech. They'll have cameras embedded into the TVs to watch your eyes and track how you look at different alerts that come up on screens and lots wow. of Red Bull. Wow, yes, I can imagine for all of that like, tracking. But why is it important to have both professions? So the, the red and blue, they, they play off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and to be a, a great red team member, you need to know the blue side and vice mm -hmm. versa is true as well. Um, so when you're looking at how to defend your cyber territory, you have to have a pretty good understanding of how it might be attacked and what those tools and the methods of being attacked look like. Um, and so the same is true from the other side of the table. And so when you're looking at why it's important to have both, um, they, they represent um, kind of different points of the spectrum. And so, uh, for example, um, an incident response a team member uh, might be charged with um, identifying when a hack is taking place and responding to that hack. Mm -hmm. And so um, they'll have to be able to um, find uh, some sort of inconsistency in their processes, or uh, maybe they're using a, a piece of software that sends them an alert saying, hey, you know, there's an unknown user here, or someone's trying to send a, a malicious file, or whatever the case may be. Um, and they'll need to know how to interpret that and then what to do. Um, now on the other side, on the red team side, um, you also have to uh, be able to defend your posture uh, in a, an offensive way um, and I'll always be modifying your perimeters and your boundaries uh, based off of what you know as um, being vulnerable in your territory. Um, and, and be able to punch back a little bit in some mm -hmm. cases. Um, and so they're, they're, they definitely play off each other. They're, they're more closely linked than most people realize. Um, and there, there's a big important place for both folks. Yeah, I've heard that some companies actually employ um, offensive, the people who will be trying to break their systems mm -hmm. on purpose so that they can find where are their vulnerabilities. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a huge industry. Um, folks will come do um, security assessments. Um, well, they'll kind of carve out a piece of their network and have someone kind of, it's called penetration testing. Mm -hmm. um, and so they'll come in and they'll look at hiring someone to 
uh, find these exploits and these vulnerabilities. Um, and uh, the good ones will also tell you how to fix them. Um, some of them <laughs> might just say, thanks for the, the check and good luck. Um, but absolutely, yeah, I think um, th there's definitely uh, folks out there. And, and also I think on the red team side, there, there's a bunch of threat researchers. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a huge uh, kind of policy debate and also a, a research opportunity there um, where folks are looking at um, different types of malware and how they behave in the wild and in different wilds and things like that. That's crazy. The uh -huh. different wilds. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Uh, just imagining. Yeah, I'm, I'm a visual person. So I'm just like, whatever you say, I imagine as like the wild savanna <laughs> or something and people certainly could be testing these uh, malwares. <laughs> but and it sounds like there's so many different things that you can do within cybersecurity. How do people get into it and how can they practice these um, I guess skills before they are in the field, especially when it comes to Team Red, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and I think um, it's highlighted by the fact that at any given moment in the United States alone, there are more than 300,000 open cybersecurity jobs. Um, there's a, a website out there called cyberseek, S-E-E-K dot org. It's a, um, published by the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, NICE. And um, there's a heat map tool where you can look at by state, by country, uh, how many open jobs there are. And um, there, there's a tool called the Cyber Workforce Framework that allows you to you know, look at these different jobs and the skill sets that are involved in them and certifications as well that they require and um, start to pinpoint different, they call them KSAs, knowledge, skills, and abilities. Mm -hmm. um, and start to look at, you know, th this is something that I really love and I could totally get behind this and I want to learn more about it. Uh, so for someone to become more involved, I think it starts with awareness. Just uh, it's, it's not going to um, become more second nature for the masses until folks like parents, like teachers and counselors are more comfortable talking about what a career in cybersecurity looks like mm -hmm. um, and starting to open the eyes of students that maybe want to become a doctor or a lawyer or a COO or whatever the case may be because we need them all and mm -hmm. cybersecurity is really a team. Um, when you talk about these kinds of opportunities, uh, there, there starts in, in as young as elementary school. Um, there are all kinds of uh, coding workshops. Um, Code.org is a big one that offers kinds of free resources. Um, Girl Scouts, uh, for example, just started some new badges in, in Girl Scouts around cybersecurity. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Palo Alto Networks is, is a supporter of that. Um, and uh, the Girl Scouts are really leading the way in that sense. Um, and then as you start to progress some skills, of course, there are some AP computer science classes and principles and things like that. Um, at the collegiate level, both undergraduate and graduate you know, programs in information security and cybersecurity and um, two-year schools versus four-year schools sometimes offer some different curriculums, mm -hmm. um, conceptual and theoretical and more technical. So those are some things to look out for. Um, and something that I'm passionate about are the cybersecurity competitions. Um, and whether it's uh, something like a hackathon, whether it's something uh, more specific to cybersecurity, um, uh, um, th those are ways for interested folks to kind of explore what the landscape looks like, um, kind of um, ingrain themselves into a, a competition environment where they can see, you know, this is what a, a day in cyber looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and these are some of the tools that I might get to use, or this is some of the recon I might be able to do, or whatever the case may be. So um, I think competitions are great. Um, and the last thing I'll mention, um, there are quite a few different security certifications. Um, that you can look at um, and uh, whether it's EC Council or SANS or uh, CompTIA, uh, all of these different bodies are out there that offer um, targeted cybersecurity certificates. Um, and oftentimes they have um, training opportunities, um, kind of uh, not necessarily classes, sometimes classes, um, but um, kind of workshops that you can go through to mm -hmm. learn the nuts and bolts and, um, and have a better opportunity uh, to pass the test and gain that certification. That's awesome. And I love how you've mentioned hackathons because that's how we met. Yeah. And that was my first time really exploring cybersecurity 
with Project Airs. Yeah. And that was really cool. So could you um, tell us more about what are you trying to do with Project Airs? Yeah. So um, the software that you're talking about is um, produced by Circadence. Um, they're my employer. And so uh, it was originally developed for the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. um, it was um, the result of what's called an IDIQ contract, indefinite duration, indefinite quantity. And essentially the government came to Circadence asking for a persistent cyber training environment, something that's fully immersive. Um, you can learn at all levels of proficiency. Um, it's highly automated and augmented, so you can have access to a 24 seven from anywhere. Um, and the, uh, the idea behind uh, Project Ares is a, a gamified environment. And the idea there, another tagline of mine, it's not rocket science, it's brain science. Um, mm -hmm. When you start to talk about um, layering on some gamified learning opportunities for the more traditional uh, lectures, PowerPoints, things like that, um, th we see improvements in knowledge retention up to 75% greater. And um, a lot of that comes down to the consistent engagement. And um, the idea of gamification uh, is essentially bringing aspects of gaming into real world environments. And so things like chat boxes for collaboration or earning points and leveling up and unlocking badges and different levels of difficulty and those kinds of things all play a big role in the idea behind Project Aries um, to really drive that kind of consistent engagement, the knowledge retention and in cybersecurity it's a bunch of perishable skills um, that, you know, it's there's there's a, 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 a stance where some of it's memorization, uh, but we can kind of turn it up a notch. Um, mm -hmm. And how do we reinforce a lot of that knowledge? Yeah, I remember playing around with it and it was so much fun. Uh, yeah, I love it. the gaming environment. It literally feels like a game. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a game. It is, so it is, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking your time and explaining all this amazing stuff to my audience. Yeah. I am very excited um, to share that with it you. It was a pleasure. Great questions. Thanks again for having me and look forward to more. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brad, for sharing your tips and also your insights onto Team Red versus Team Blue and also on the kind of ecosystem where they don't where they can't survive without each other. I hope you guys now understand the topic much better and if you want to learn more about cybersecurity, you have some resources and also check out Circadence because they have a lot of different resources around cybersecurity and in fact they're doing a lot of really cool things around cybersecurity um, education. So yes, check out the link will be in bio. Go scroll down and check it out right now. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my channel because there will be more awesome content coming your way. And yeah, you can also follow me on Instagram and other social media to kind of follow me day to day. <laughs> Have a wonderful time today you're currently experiencing. Bye.